to look at how the amplitude changes over time, something an analog or digital meter just can't do. Now it's time to take a closer look at the sine wave itself. The signal you see on the scope trace is a complete cycle of a sine wave. It's called one full cycle. The time needed to complete one full cycle is called the signal's period. The period of the waveform is measured in seconds, but could be measured in milliseconds, microseconds, or nanoseconds. We can divide the full sine wave cycle into a positive half cycle and a negative half cycle, as indicated here. Any point of the signal that goes above the center reference line is considered to be a part of the positive half cycle, while anything that goes below that reference line is considered to be a part of the negative half cycle. Frequency is simply the number of cycles per second. Many years ago, frequency was measured in cycles per second, kilocycles per second, or megacycles per second. The unit cycles per second has been replaced by hertz, or HZ. The unit prefixes kilo, mega, and giga are still used, and so now we have kilohertz, megahertz, and gigahertz. It's important that you understand that the oscilloscope does not display frequency directly, but rather time. You'll need to make the conversion from time to frequency. Once we know the time necessary to complete one cycle, we can easily calculate frequency. The formula is simple. Frequency equals 1 divided by the time needed for one cycle, or F equals 1 divided by T where F is the frequency in hertz and T is the time in seconds. The first thing you'll need to do to calculate a signal's frequency is to measure its period, the time necessary to complete one cycle. This is easily accomplished, just like measuring a DC voltage, except now it's time. Just count the divisions horizontally for one complete cycle, just like reading a ruler. In this case, note that there are ten large horizontal divisions. Just like measuring amplitude, in order to determine the period or the time for one complete cycle of this signal, we need to know how much each major division is worth horizontally. So we need to check the horizontal sweep rate control setting. This control sometimes is called the time per division control. In this example, the horizontal sweep rate control is set to 0.1 milliseconds per division. So that means each major division horizontally is worth 0.1 milliseconds. Our sine wave occupies 10 large divisions horizontally. 10 divisions multiplied by 0.1 milliseconds per division equals 1 millisecond. So the signal's period is 1 millisecond. This means it takes one millisecond for the sine wave to complete one cycle. The frequency of the sine wave is easily calculated by using the formula F equals one divided by T. So in our example, F equals one divided by one millisecond, or one divided by one times ten to the minus three seconds. Therefore, the frequency of the signal is one thousand hertz, or one kilohertz. Notice I can vary the amplitude of the signal without changing its frequency. If, for example, this signal were in the audible range of frequencies, varying the amplitude would be varying the loudness of the signal, but the pitch or frequency of the signal would remain constant. Without changing anything about the signal, we can change the horizontal sweep rate control setting. This results in compressing the waveform if the sweep rate is decreased. Even though the signal looks completely different at the various horizontal sweep rate control settings, you need to realize that the frequency is constant. We're just changing the way it's displayed by varying the scope settings. We're switching to progressively slower and slower sweep speeds. Here the sweep is disabled. This is a great way to measure peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of a sine wave. So just how do you measure the voltage of a sine wave? You need to set the vertical attenuator just like when measuring DC voltages. In this case, using a 1x probe, the vertical attenuator is set to 0.2 volts per division. If we were using a 10x probe rather than a 1x probe, we'd have to multiply the vertical attenuator setting by 10. Now each division is worth 2 volts per division rather than 0.2.
There are three common sine wave voltage measurements, peak to peak, peak, and RMS or root mean square. In this example, we have eight divisions of vertical deflection from the uppermost positive peak of the waveform to the lowermost negative peak of the waveform. Since our vertical attenuator is set to 0.2 volts per division, and we have eight divisions of vertical deflection, this results in a 1.6 volt peak-to-peak -peak waveform amplitude. All we have to do is multiply eight divisions by 0.2 volts per division, which gives us 1.6 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. The sine wave's peak voltage measurement is simply half of the peak-to-peak -peak value, or from the center of the reference of the trace to the uppermost positive peak of the waveform. In this example, the sine wave's peak voltage is four divisions from the center reference ground trace. Four divisions multiplied by 0.2 volts per division gives us 0.8 volts peak. You can also measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the sine wave and divide it by two. The root mean square, or RMS, voltage of a sine wave is 70.7 percent of the peak voltage. To get the RMS value of a sine wave, multiply the peak voltage of the sine wave by 0 .707. RMS is the equivalent DC heating value in a sine wave. You can consult an electronics textbook for more information about RMS calculations. To summarize RMS calculations of a sine wave, multiply the peak voltage by 0 .707 to obtain the RMS value. To get back, take the RMS value and multiply it by 1.414, or the square root of 2, to get the peak voltage. Let's check and see how well you've mastered the material in the preceding section. Suppose the vertical attenuator is set to 0.5 volts per division and a 10x scope probe is connected. If the signal occupies five divisions vertically, what's the peak-to-peak -peak voltage? The choices are 12 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, 50 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, 25 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, 0.1 milliseconds peak-to-peak. -peak. The correct answer is choice number three, 25 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. Try this one. If the horizontal sweep rate control is set to 0.1 milliseconds per division and a complete cycle of the sine wave occupies seven divisions, what's the signal's period? Your choices are 1 volt, 50 hertz, 0.1 hertz, or 0.7 milliseconds. If you selected choice 4, 0.7 milliseconds, you're correct. Try your hand at this one. What's the signal's frequency in the prior example? 50 hertz, 1,428.57 hertz, 1,000 hertz, or 1.414 volts peak to peak? If you selected choice 2, 1,428.57 hertz, you're correct. Try this one. If a sine wave measures 10 volts peak to peak, what is the RMS equivalent? Your choices are 